Alright guys, another PES 2020 My Club Squad Builder. This time we're going for the diamond formation with... Da -da 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 Santos, the pressure whore. I actually hate playing against Santos so much. I don't even use it anymore. I use like different formation, 4 2 3 5 2 uh, to dominate Santos. But again, the way the games work right now, the, you know, this is this video is made before the Data Pack to October patch. Like, I do have a formation domination series where I talk about which formation most likely to dominate which. But with the current My Club algorithm, honestly, most of the time, if you're not leading, when the game's algorithm is against you, your team is all over the place, passing, going wrong, it doesn't even matter what formation you're using. All your focus is to adjust your game mentality from red to blue accordingly and try to defend manually, do manual passing, even manual finishing most of the time, just to get that goal. Once you get that goal, then you're all good. So against Santos, um, ideally for a squad builder, as always, your center back should be a tall and strong with a fast and mobile. A lot of people use 4CB, which is super sweaty. The problem is when people use 4CB, it actually affects your striker's positioning. It will mess them up. So you can use 4CB, you know, but good players will break you. It just depends how good you are. Don't go for center back just because the opponent does. Starting from a defense, ideally you want to use an offensive goalkeeper. Even though we say that with an aggressive manager should be offensive goalkeeper, most of the time when a striker comes in, the goalkeeper has the time to freaking go out. Even though I press triangle, he doesn't. So sometimes when the game decides that attack should be a goal, it's going to be a goal. So for my defense... I usually use a fullback who can play a center back. If I'm playing against somebody who constantly spam me on the flank on the right back, I just make make him a CB. I do that often. But ideally, I would recommend with Santos even using at least uh, three center back. Use a fullback who can play CB, or you can just use defense on them. You know, just personal preference. But what's important, obviously, having a player who has uh, inspire uh, the new feature like low pass, lofted pass to star. Obviously, these players. When Sergio Biscuit's on the ball, as soon as he's on the ball, your teammate will act like Sergio's about to make a lofted pass. And same thing with the dribble through. It's like Messi's trademark if a player has a dribble through to star. When he's going on full speed dribbling, your teammate will make decoy runs and create space for the dribbler. So ideally, starting from a defense, I would go 3CB and one right back or left back or other way around. Or you can just go to fullbacks and use defense on them. Uh, you can use defense on your DMF as well. It depends who you're playing against. If you, if I, when I play against Santos, I always man mark the AMF. Again, I will talk about man marking and tight marking in a video. Pretty sure this is out right now or not. Now, this is more of a balanced squad builder. I have an anchor man, I have a box to box, and I have a destroyer. If you want to be more, you know, uh, powerhouse midfielders, you can go. Um, destroyer and you can go anchor man and two destroyers but usually the more balanced version is a destroyer or anchor man and two box to box but for an example of this video i'm going with three uh why for instance if i have a center back on this side i'm gonna put destroyer on that side because alaba is gonna overlap and the destroyer will cover that space this may not make a difference but if you pay attention it will so your AMF definitely has to be whole player, man. Whole players make amazing runs. Like, I have a normal silver balls and yellow high level. This guy is a game changer for me. And uh, Havertz, I mean, may I say more? So, I do have two box to box in the midfield. There are certain box to box players can play DMF solidly. I mean, this guy is tall, he's fast, he can cover, come back and cover spaces, he's got decent defensive work rate. You don't necessarily need an anchor man. Ideally, if a formation has one DMF, Anchorman is essential because he's going to stay vertical, not going to go horizontal most of the time. Plus, you can use anchor on him. So, this is the ideal squad, but they use it accordingly. Personally, I'm doing good with using a anybody who has some pace because manager is aggressive, so he can cover back spaces when I'm losing the ball. Um, my two center backs, those two center backs are going to run up and down, so they need pace and stamina. Ideally, I would start with two box to box. If things go bad, I probably add a whole player as a CMF or an orchestrator because orchestrators, they may, they may be slow and not cover spaces um, quickly, but I trust them on the ball to dribble, to shield, to turn, to make good passes. Regarding the advanced instructions or your striker choices, ideally, again, you want to have a... With Santos, usually to striker formation, I recommend tall and strong with fast and mobile. 
But with Santos, really, it's all about having players with pace and good finishing. If you have a player who's not that fast, like let's say Harry Kane, Harry Kane is all about, you know, uh, getting the ball, turn and finish in the box. If a player has cut, cut behind and turn skill, uh, like obviously Cruyff has, um, first time fake shots in the box, it will change your game. When you do that first time fake shot, you turn, boom, ram it in. It will affect the player's positioning. If a player has um, cut behind and turn, you can do a fake shot and then press the direction. If a player doesn't have cut behind and turn, don't do it with a direction. The ball will just travel further away. If you want to do first time fake shot with a player who doesn't have cut behind and turn, make sure you're not, you're not doing it with his weak foot. And don't put the left stick with it, you know. When, when Aubameyang gets the ball, I do a fake shot. I trick my opponent. He thinks I'm passing, but I don't. And then I can turn it into a through ball. And also, um, <clears throat> the new feature, which is the um, which is the dummy kick as well. You know, you press circle or square, and then you hit triangle, which I've barely seen anybody use it since the demo on my club. No, seen anybody use it. I use it occasionally, sometimes. Um, so, based on a squad builder, Making a squad or based on player playing style card, it's really important. If you want to know more about players playing style card, if you hover over the game plan and if you come here, select player setting and team sheet, you can simply that's what explains what inspired is uh, right here. It explains it right there. And then player playing style goal poacher, dummy runner, fox in the box, target man, prolific winger. You can have a work through that and you will understand what they do and the positions they can play. For example, a fox in the box, fox in the box card is only active as a striker. Uh, they've changed a lot of things. Like for example, um, whole player used to be AMF only, you know, and now whole players apparently can play SS as well. SS, AMF, RMF, LMF, CMF. Do you know what I mean? Like even box to box can play DMF as well. The only thing that still stays classic is Anchorman. Anchorman card is only active as a DMF, so you have to pay attention to that. Uh, like for example, right here. Boom, Anchorman card is bright white. If I make him CMF, Anchorman is faded away. So the card won't be active. So regarding the advanced structures, you have options, man. You want to go sweaty mode, but it's more of an advanced thing. Um, if you want to focus down the middle 100%, which I'm guessing that's your point, using a diamond formation. I would definitely recommend using Anchorman on both strikers and counter target on your AMF. Why? Because when you use counter target on your AMF, he's going to stay up and link up with these strikers. Okay? It's all about give and go. One, two, uh, give and go pass. Third man run. You do know one, two with Cruyff and Mpape. Cruyff is going to make a run. You know, don't give it back to Cruyff instantly. You do, you're doing one, two in between Cruyff and, Cruyff and Mpape. Cruyff is going to make a run. Don't give the ball to Cruyff instantly. Give it to Mpape and then to Cruyff. That's like more of a third man run. Predictable one, two is going to get figured out against good players. So, anchor on both and counter target here. Or, if you don't want to get involved your um, AMF too much, which I don't know why you would do that, you want to play more direct, then anchor on both strikers and counter target on both of them. Uh, you, you know, use it as a personal preference, whatever suits you. And again, as always, if I am leading, my defensive option will be just using defense on both of my fullbacks. And in this case, because I, am, um, I already have a... CB, I would use defense here and defense on an anchor man. And I'll probably go deep defensive line. That's if I want to lead the game. But usually I have a 4 triple 2 formation uh, after minute 75 or 80. If I'm leading 2 nil by 2 goal difference, I will switch to that. And again, if you feel like you're tight marked, use wing rotation. But that will make one of your strikers go to the flank. It will mess up the opponent. If you are can break the opponent, he's playing very deep. This whole anchor is not working. You can use uh, counter target on your AMF only. What that does, if you have counter target on your AMF only, one of your strikers will drop. And the focus is going to be on AMF making unpredictable runs. You can use false nine as well, you know, but using counter on AMF, it will make one of the strikers uh, drop anyway. So again, if you watch my advanced instructions uh, video, you will know which advanced instructions to use and why you use it. It's just a second option. It's not... A necessity you're supposed to use advanced structures it's just a you know more of a plan b option one uh, you don't need to use it all the time unless you do need it so i think we covered everything regarding the santos squad builder 
Um, I think the next video we may make uh, 352, which is... Uh, I'm going to leave that one out and see how you guys... Because we've done uh, with um, 433, 3CF. We've done it with uh, 4222 and a diamond. Uh, comment down below what squad builder next you want to see. You want to see 352. Uh, you want to see um, what other formations that is effective in the game right now. I think we covered most of the effective formations with this current patch, like before Data Pack 2. Uh, we covered a lot of them anyway. And regarding the gameplay, remember, don't make your 1-2s predictable. When you defend with this current patch, I just select the center back. I spoke about uh, defending with this current patch before Data Pack in a video. You can check that out. So your gameplay is more important than everything else. Of course, your tactic and formation matters, but it's about your decision making. It's about not losing your temper. It's about reading your opponent. Even though sometimes you read your opponent, if, if somebody does one thing over and over for 90 minutes, he will get a chance. Always be scared about somebody doing one thing 100 times than knowing 100 ways to, uh, you know, play the game. Do you know what I mean? So... If you find this video useful, make sure to share it on the internet, show some support, hit like and subscribe if you haven't, and I appreciate my current subscribers. Appreciate your support, guys. Till next time, I've been Sep. Ciao for now.